Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I'm going to be doing a new series here, and it's going to be called Gen Zero. And the concept of Gen Zero is to transcend the, the concept of generations. You know, we know about the baby boomers and, you know, the boomer generation, Gen X, Gen Z, millennials, Gen Alpha, right? But there is this concept that's starting to emerge in the longevity world um, and the anti-aging world where, where you have um, the idea that you're going to transcend other generations and that as time continues on, that uh, people will, there's going to be a group of people that won't die as fast as, let's say, the rest of the population. And that over time, there's going to be more, it, it will be more prevalent for these long agers, all right, because of their anti-aging uh, aspects to their life and their longevity aspects to their life. So this is going to be the start of a longer series. So you understand some of the thoughts that I have been having for the last few months here. Now, let me begin with this concept that mankind, you're going to have the standard scientific, and then you're going to have the biblical. In the standard scientific, the 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 concept was is that man did not live very long life. You may have had some people that were centurions, but um, but it, beyond being a hundred years old was definitely not prevalent, and going to nine hundred years would have been impossible. That's what the science is saying. Okay, now what if, what if um, the Bible was right, where populations, let me sh should say, rephrase that, that individuals within a population had a farther lifespan, a longer lifespan into hundreds of years. Okay, now people may say, well, it's biblical, so maybe is it solar or is it linear? And the, the, the years, you know, may be calculated a little bit less or a little bit more, depending on, you know, what's the interpretation, if it's based on a solar or a linear calendar. But the reality, at least from the biblical standpoint, is, is that people lived a long life but it was declining from from adam so you have these this two trains of thought here one train of thought is is that mankind in in different epochs did live for some few but some people did live you know about 100 or maybe a little bit more but the far majority died at a very young age, either in infancy or in their 20s or 30s. They think that, you know, early hunting and gathering societies, an old person would have been in their 40s. So, uh, you know, that's where science is coming from. Now, from the Bible, age started to decline once Adam was, Adam and Eve are kicked out of the Garden of Eden, all right? And there's a little bit of a story be, you know, for, for Adam. Adam was supposed to live for a thousand years, but he ended up giving 70 of his years to King David. King David was supposed to be a stillborn, but because of the hyper-intelligence and Keep in mind this word hyper-intelligence or uber-intelligence or super-intelligence. 
because it's going to come up in our realm of AI. But this hyper intelligence that Adam had, he knew that there was going to be a stillborn that was that could have been a major leader for the Jewish people and help the establishment of the building of this temple. So Adam gave 70 of his years to the stillborn David so he could be king, so he could live a life in this realm where the temple could be established through through his son Solomon. So this chart here starts with Adam, but it's less, he was supposed to live for a thousand years, but he gave 70, 70 of it to the stillborn in the future to King David. So other than Adam, the the dates or the the years of life are in descending order based on different people in the Bible. The highlight are the three important characters that I that I put up. The first highlight is Adam, which is 930 years. Then there was Noah, which lived for 950 years. He lived actually a longer life than Adam. And then there was Abraham, who lived 175 years, and then Moses lived for 120 years. Okay, so now we don't know when Adam really, you know, started, right? But it's in the, it's in the, um, you know, the 6,000, roughly 6,000 B BCE. Noah is around 5,000 BCE. And Abraham was 2000 BCE. Mo, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Adam was around 6000 BCE, or going based on biblical text, all right? Because in his, there's this concept, there's this concept in the, you know, through creationism versus evolution right so science is going to be based on evolution and they these they're not necessarily mutually exclusive here and i'll explain why adam in the bible is around six thousand bce lives for a thousand year almost a thousand years but had to give 70 there he gave 70 of those years to king david in the future then there's noah at five thousand Abraham at 175 years and in, 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 for 20 BCE. And then there's Moses at 1,300 BCE. So there's this downward trajectory, okay? This downward trajectory has a similar... And I'll have to dig this up for a future video. It has a similar um, dynamic that is related to energy levels at the subatomic particle level. Now, I know this sounds crazy, but there's a story. There's a bigger story that's being told here, okay? Independent of if... The Bible story is 100% historically fact, but there is a there is a mathematical model that is that is being presented here. Okay, so you have Abraham, you have you have Adam. That's at 930. You have Noah at 950. You have Abraham at 175, and you have Moses at 120. So there's the step function that's taking place. 
And these other people, you know, are biblical characters, um, family members, sons of whatever. Uh, but I, I don't remember exactly who they, these are, but so, someone can easily Google this and you can, you know, find out all the major characters in the Bible and when, how long they lived. All right. But this is basically the trajectory. If you filter it from highest to lowest, but you leave the 930 as the starting point because that's Adam. Okay. That's the reason why Adam isn't below Noah, because I wanted to, sh to explain the reason that Adam was supposed to be a thousand years, but he gave 70 for the future, future generation to King David. That's biblical. That's Jewish history. All right. Now we are in a new era. All right. And we need to understand this, this trajectory. Now with Moses and what's stated in the Bible is that people won't live to more than 120 years. That's the max until the beginnings of a new era. Okay. This kind of like the beginnings of a messianic era. Now, if you go based on the 6,000 year calendar, we need to kind of focus on some key important dates here. Okay. There's supposed to be an AI in, in 2029, there's supposed to be human intelligence for AI. AI will reach human intelligence. In 2045, the singularity between AI and humans. So there's a there's this merger between AI and humans in 20 in 2045. The 2029 date is from Kurzweil. The 2045 date is also from Kurzweil. Now, Elon Musk thinks that AI will supersede human intelligence by 2027 which is possible, all right? So these dates might actually move a little bit, but we're going based on Kurzweil data. Now, there is a blackout that is going to take place at around 2054. This blackout is, is something that is where technology seems to be in battle with Luddites and that there is a, there's a, some sort of blackout that takes place. All right. My understanding of the blackout is going to be human made, not natural made. That blackout is some sort of like energy, energy reduction or energy blackout where there's going to be a lot of people that will die during the blackout. In 2,240, that's the end of the biblical 6,000 year cycle. All right. And the biblical 6,000 year cycle guarantees the messianic age. All right. So the messianic age starts in 20, in, in 2,240. In 2,240, the messianic age is guaranteed at 2,240, but it can be earlier. Okay. Now, if, okay, so those are the key dates. Now, let's take a look at what's been happening since Moses' time. Moses dies in 120. And let's, and between Moses and, and the 1800s, not a whole lot has been happening with technology, right? There's been a slow progression of technology, but, uh, it's really during the industrial age where there's a rapid improvement of agriculture and and um, through that agriculture and urbanization, industrialization, then the spike in populations in the United in in the world start to to go up. All right. But uh, life span had was going down. Um, from Moses' time to the 1800s. 
the average life expectancy was about 40. But there were people that lived in their 80s or 90s or 100, right? But the average person died much younger. And I'm sure that even during the biblical times that the average person did not live to 700 years. They lived much lower than that. Very possible that they lived even below 100. But the point here is, is that you had these individuals that were able to beat the trend. They were the outliers. Now, with the in the Bible, it states that no one can, can surpass the 120 mark until a new this this messianic era starts. Okay. So you had in 18 what is known. Uh, through record in the 1800s, uh, there was an individual that was documented to have lived on 108. So you do have centurions, and centurions go all the way back to even Adam's day, right? But they they were, I would say, more. I think centurions were much more rare between Moses between Moses death and the 1800s okay centurions were probably more common but i don't think it was the average in other epochs be you know right after let's say noah okay but people after noah people's life expectancy started to go down okay now, with, with um, the 1800s, at the 1800s with technology and with industrialization, um, you're starting to have more people living in their hundreds or 120, okay? But it's just kind of starting, okay? That's the point, at least in documents. Is it possible that in the 1500s or even, you know, the 1200s, there were people that were over 100 years old. It's possible, but there's there's really no documentation that I know of that proves that. But what is interesting is, is that if you look at the Big Bang and you had this a singularity moment, all right, similar in usage to what, what Kurzweil is talking about here. But there was a singularity moment in the universe where there was an, an immense amount of energy released and eventually turns into material. So, you know, first it's plasma and then it turns into subatomic particles, and then then protons and electrons, and then you're, you know, moving towards elements, nuclear nuclear fission um and fusion that ends up making new elements okay so if you look from the start of the big bang to where we're at now there has been a cooling off of the universe all right and you can almost sense that there was this kind of like these Moments in time where a big event starts to take place. So there's a cooling off. Let's just assume that this graph, even though it's an age graph, let's just explain this graph in terms of the universe. Okay. Now, the universe is birthed, right? And there is an the high energy level. And then eventually it starts to cool off. And then and, and there's a phase transition. We're going from plasma to subatomic particles and from subatomic particles to protons. And when you go to that point, then you're getting another phase transition. So there's a big drop in energy levels. So going from a high energy state to a lower energy state and it's plateauing. And then all of a sudden another big event happens where there's nuclear, there's uh, nuclear nucleus um, genesis nucleogenesis uh creating new elements and further cooling of the of the universe okay and then it plateaus all right let's assume this part of the graph is gone 
So the Bible story, when you do a descending of the dates, has a similar feature to energy phase transitions at different epochs within the cosmos. Okay. It's not exact, but it has a similarity. Okay. So, okay. Now we're going back to just the age, this being an age, age graph, all right, for humans. You know, I'm just using this, this part of the graph as an analogy of the cosmos phase transition. Okay. It may be right, may be wrong, but there, there's a similarity there. All right. But through technology, we're starting to improve through better life. And, and th th there are people that are now moving towards the 120 again, back in the Moses' time. All right. So we have these centurions, the, the farthest one that I know that is documented, that proof of documentation is someone that, that lived in the, this is 1800s. Okay. Now, in 1997, the oldest person known, documented, to have lived is 122. And that doesn't mean there are not others. It's just the, 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 the oldest documented one. And there have been a many, many centurions since then in certain regions of the world, like Japan, in blue zones, all right, what they call the blue zones. All right. So now, uh, let's fast forward. All right, we got we're at in 1997, but now we're in 2024. In 2024, and in 2024, we're only five years away, potentially even three years away from a major AI breakthrough. Okay, so let's just assume that Kurzweil's right that we have human intelligence and AI. But AI is going to be able to do social learning through other AI systems. And that intelligence level is going to have a breakaway from hum humans. So the ones that are born in, in this year are going to benefit greatly by breakthroughs in AI. Okay. Through medical discovery, through in silico simulation. And the big pharma and the medical industry and the medical scientists are going to be able to use some of this AI to increase people's lifespan cure diseases, treat diseases, slow down the aging process. We are already seeing people aging slower. I'm actually one of them. I'm one of those people that are aging slower because of lifestyle. And that's diet, exercise, and maybe a little bit of genetics, but I think a big part of it is lifestyle. So with that said, um, there, more and more people are moving towards the centurion world and hitting the 120 mark and having vitality as they're moving up to the the 100 year mark okay but what's different from Moses's time and to to 1997 is technology but what's really different from 1997 to to 2024 is the the birthing of ai and the the fast pace of medical discovery especially through simulation all right so with this people that are born in 2024 are going to benefit greatly and push the the age of individuals to the 200s all right 
That would mean that a 200, someone born in 2024, benefiting from the, the, the AI medical breakthroughs will now live to 200. So that would mean that they start dying off in the year 2224, which is very, very close to the 6,000 year cycle. Now there is a few caveats and, and, and a few positive caveats and, and, and a few maybe negative caveats. The positive caveats are that these medical breakthroughs may actually expand the, the life expectancy, not only of the ones that are born in 2024, but these medical breakthroughs may actually extend the life expectancy greatly for the ones that have that are 50 years old or 40 years old or, or you know 30 years old right now in 2024. So by the time 2224 comes around, they may actually surpass the 200 range. All right. So medical breakthroughs aren't going to be just for the ones that are born in 2024, but also these medical breakthroughs are going to help to extend life for the ones that are already born, already living, living today. Okay. Now, some people, not everyone's going to benefit for multiple reasons. Even the ones that are being born in 2024, this 200 doesn't mean everybody. That just means that there are going to be outliers. So, but the prevalence of the outliers are going to be a higher prevalence. Okay. The average person may still, you know, maybe die at age 100. But the prevalence of these outliers are going to be larger. And the ones that are going to be able to benefit are going to be ones that follow the follow a direction based on what the AI says increases your probability of long life. And, the, and taking advantage of the medical breakthroughs. But the problem comes in is, is that if there is if there are economic disparities, some people may not be able to benefit from this breakthrough because of their socioeconomic status. They may not be able to afford it. They may not know about it. Wars, whatever. There, something is going to prevent them or something is going to prevent people from fully benefiting. Part of it's through lifestyle choice. Others, it's going to be because of socioeconomic situation or negative externalities of just human existence, like wars. All right. Now, so the takeaway here is, is that this AI revolution in medicine in 2029 is going to benefit many people that are born today if they take advantage of what they of the medical breakthroughs in terms of what to eat how to the lifestyle what the, the best way to, for lifestyle and also when disease does happen uh, having treatments and cures for those diseases. Okay. Now there's something to be take, taken away um, in lessons learned from cancer and HIV patients. More and more people are surviving cancer, even though there's no cure. And there's still many people that suffer from cancer. But the ones that have survived, especially in the 10, 20 year mark, they are starting to get age-related cancer treatment um, uh, symptoms, okay? And those symptoms from their cancer treatment because of radiation or chemo have aged organs. Same thing with the, the, the therapy for people that are on the therapy that prevents the viral load of HIV. People that have been on 
medication to prevent their HIV from getting out of control? Have age, have accelerated their age? So there's these new kind of symptoms of HIV patients and cancer patients for, let's say, heart disease or liver disease or memory or bone loss. There's an there, what they're noticing are accelerated aging in these patients. Even though they beat their cancer, they have their HIV controlled, they're aging faster. All right. So there's something to be learned by this idea that when we expand our life, we may also start seeing other diseases start to manifest that are age-related diseases, all right? Now, some of these breakthroughs that are going to be taking place with AI are going to be how to treat some of these age-related diseases or these manifestations of diseases that were due to long chronic treatment such as cancer and such as HIV. But the AI is going to not only have cures and, and, and treatments for certain diseases and many diseases, but it will also have a protocol or a, a series of things that one could do that helps to slow down the aging process if one followed. All right. Now, we kind of have that algorithm now with some of these longevity experts through proper diet, exercise, whatever. And they're, they're pushing the, the, the limits to where these longevity people will, assuming there's no breakthrough in medical AI, let's, let's assume that for a second, just the, the human algorithm of longevity through diet and exercise people are going to punch through to over 120 years maybe 130 i don't know but it's going to be it, it's going to be past the 120 mark all right for a lot of these longevity experts assuming no medical breakthrough in ai but with medical breakthrough of ai the ones that can benefit from taking the taking use of this of the of the medical um, protocol from the AI are going to take and extend even beyond the 130 mark. And these people are going to be 200 and plus. I know this sounds crazy. I know this sounds crazy. All right. But there are going to be people that are living today that are slowing their aging process, either in their 20, they're, they're in their 20s, or they're in their 30s, 40s, 50s, they're slowing their process down and they're maybe 20 years younger and they're gonna be able to benefit from the AI breakthrough that will take place in 2029. And that will push them over the, the 20, the, over the 200 plus year mark. So the point I'm making here is, is that people that are living today that are radically following an anti-aging protocol, radically following a longevity protocol, that we that they're they are increasing their odds of of hitting the 200 plus year mark, 200 year 200 plus years of life. Okay. Now as they are expanding into 2,224, there's going to be further advancement in medicine that could even potentially push them even beyond 200 plus years. The point here is, is that this singularity, there's like two singularities happening here. There's a singularity with AI and humans in 2045. Now, I'll go into more detail in another video on some of the pluses and minuses to that and what I think the what I think will happen with the dystopia and how the blackout is going to affect this singularity. Okay. But just set aside that whole transhumanist AI merging. 
I don't, I'm not a fan of AI merging with humans. All right. But I do think that AI can be used as a means to understand the universe better, to give us a, uh, tools to be able to advance our technology and our existence for the better. Um, now, of course, certain types of technology could make things worse because as I've said in previous videos, a steak knife can cut a steak, but it also can kill someone. So it depends on how you use the technology. Depends on if it's going to be positive social change or negative social change. Now, with AI's breakthrough, you're going to have people that are going to be hitting the 200-year-plus mark. Now, they're going to mean that there's a social dynamic that happens here. And that is that when people realize that they can live longer and they have a positive outlook and want to live longer, they're going to do positive things in their life to make sure that they can live the longest life they can. But there are other people that have self-destructive behavior. They, they, they destroy their body and their mind to the point where they're not going to benefit from the AI medical breakthroughs. They may, instead of dying at age 40 or 50, um, they may be able to extend it to 90, maybe even to 100 for these ones that are more self-destructive. But the ones that are not self-destructive can benefit more from the AI breakthrough. And the ones that are born today are also going to benefit greatly, even if they have some self destructive behavior in their early years, you know, and let's say in their teens. But the thing is, is that if people are more pure in terms of making decisions in their life that are the best for their health and mental well-being, then these individuals are going to benefit the most from the AI breakthroughs in terms of in personalized precision protocols for longevity for that individual and the precision medicine for that individual when diseases do start to arise. So the point here is, is that there are many people out there that can benefit from this AI medical breakthrough that's going to be taking place in 2029, maybe even 2027. There's a big medical breakthrough that's going to be happening in 2029. There are going to, some of these medical breakthroughs in the beginning are only going to be for people that can afford it. It could be for the uber wealthy. Uh, there are going to be others that won't be able to afford it, but because of their lifestyle choices will be able to benefit from when the technology becomes cheaper. All right. So finding ways to not to truncate your life is really important. So you can benefit from this medical breakthrough that's going to be taking place in 2029. Now, in another video, we'll go into the singularity and the blackout. All right. I've already done a video about, you know, the 6,000 year cycle and the messianic age in, in 2,240. But, but the thing is, is that it, that's guaranteed. It could happen earlier, but, um, and that's based on Jewish principles here, but the, uh, maybe I'll do a video, a short video about a recap on that. But, but the thing is, is that this, there's going to be a jump, just like how the universe and how the age step down. You know, the universe's energy levels step down through different phase transitions. Well, we had the same thing with our a a biblical age of people in descending order. There was a step down, right? And then eventually, you know, it got to the point where it was averaging about 80. But the, but the, but there's going to be a ramp up, 
a fast ramp up because of this advancement in artificial intelligence. Okay. Now, the universe had this kind of step down of energy, just like how our body can heal itself and it has ATP. As we get older, our energy levels start to go down too. It, our bodies are mimicking the entropy of the universe. But through this medical breakthrough in AI, in providing precision protocols that per that try to tr that will treat and prevent disease and add longevity to an individual and slow down the aging process. What will happen is, is that people will regain their energy and this entropy, th their, th this entropy will be re almost reversed. And um, you won't have that same breakdown a typical breakdown of age. Now, my gut feeling here is this, that if AI did not happen and we just had just better diet exercise and, and didn't have uh, d destructive personalities and we were more spiritual, that our ages would start to tick up especially for the outliers, would start to tick up into about the 200 and the two, 250 range and probably plateau out. But with AI and fine-tuning what one can do, the advancements in technology, assuming that mankind doesn't destroy itself, but the, the, the advancements in 200 years from now cannot even be fathomed. So, you know, in 1800, they had no idea the way we would be living. And the same thing that even we have a modern high-tech society today, it's going to be far more advanced in 2,224. Now, if I remember right, I thought Star Trek was... It was the 23rd century, maybe it was the 24th century, but we're, you know, if it was the 23rd century, you know, we're, we're talking about Star Trek here type technology. All right. Assuming mankind doesn't blow itself up. All right. Or an asteroid hits or whatever. But, but the point here is, is that people will there are going to be people living today that will that will punch through the 200 plus year life life expectancy they'll live beyond 200 years because they are benefiting from the ai medical breakthroughs but it's not going to be everybody because it's going to be there's going to be a price barrier people won't be able to afford it for some treatments but over time those treatments will reduce in price so there's going to be kind of an elysium kind of effect in the very beginning of this where only the super wealthy are going to be able to pay for it but many of the super wealthy didn't have the lifestyle to be able to fully benefit from this ai breakthrough medical breakthrough so if they had a bad lifestyle, but they want to live forever, they may not fully benefit and they may live, let's say, to 125 or 100, 150 because they had a bad lifestyle, but they could afford the treatments. But the ones that had a good lifestyle, they could afford the treatments, they're going to punch through the 200 plus year mark. And the ones that stayed pure and pay and 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 are, are born this year in 2024 and their bodies are um they live a life in an environment that is conducive for longevity and aren't in self-destructive mode then they're going to be able to also benefit even if they're in a social economic middle class kind of situation 
they'll be able to benefit greatly and punch through the 200 year mark. The ones that are in, in poverty, most likely their environment will be such that they do not have the environmental, uh, the environmental conditions to be able to benefit from the AI, even through lifestyle, to be able to punch through the, the 200 plus life expectancy. For the ones that are poor that have a predisposition for longevity, they may go beyond the 120 year mark that are born today. They're born, born in 2024. So that means that they'll live to about 2,120 and um, uh, uh, roughly 2,144. All right. Maybe a little bit beyond that. So there are going to be different people that are going to be benefiting from, from this medical AI. The rich, but they're most likely not going to punch through the 200 if they had a poor lifestyle. If they have a great lifestyle um, in terms of longevity and they had the money, they're going to punch through the 200 plus. The ones that are the longevity experts that are, that, that, um, that have prepared their body to slow down the aging process, they will also benefit from this AI medical breakthrough, but a little bit downstream from the, the ones that are the rich class. Now, so I, I have this feeling that there are, there are people that are living today that, that are aging slower, that have been taking care of their body over a long duration, of time, not three years, but like decades, these people will will be able to benefit even if they can't afford the 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 ultra high tech treatments, but they will benefit from the medical breakthroughs that AI will provide. That starts in twenty twenty nine. Now it'll be more downstream because they can't afford it. Maybe they won't be able to benefit until twenty fifty. But the point here is, is that these longevity types have designed their body in a way where they'll be able to benefit. So there's about, I think, 1,000, maybe just under 2,000 people that are living today that will be living beyond 200 years. If they are able to tap into the medical breakthroughs, but they have to have the lifestyle change. They have to, they have to have the lifestyle change and be able to benefit from this medical technology, either in the first gen of the medical technology or in, you know, the second or third gen generate uh, generation of the medical technology. This goes, this gets us back to this concept of, Gen zero. Because there is an exponential aspect to the, the AI medical breakthrough up to a certain point, and it's too far into the future on knowing where the, the plateau is, but this, this AI customization, um, precision longevity is going to further compound the effects of the early adopters. Now, it's possible that these early adopters that are targeted for um, targeted for 200 plus may actually go to 450 plus through the exponential of medical AI breakthrough, okay? The point here is, is that the jump there's a huge jump from 120 to 200. There's going to be another big jump from 200 to maybe 350 or 450, and then another big jump, all right? So someone that is lit, someone that is living today, I don't know why it's doing that. I don't know. Someone that is living today, let's say, and they're not doing you know anything crazy like stem cell injection, but they're just doing a longevity 
protocol. All right. They're, they're possible to live 120 plus with no AI breakthrough. With an AI breakthrough, so this is AI breakthrough. And this is just normal or non, non AI, AI breakthrough. Okay. With an AI breakthrough for a longevity person, that's going to take them to the two, 200 plus year mark. For now, the people that are, um, They're non-longevity experts, non-AI. They may move their life expectancy to 80 to 90, maybe even 100. So let's be generous and say 100 so you get an idea where I'm going with this. Okay, non, this is the non-longevity expert. This is the longevity expert. So non-longevity expert with AI breakthrough, they punch through and get to about 130, or maybe 150, okay? So this gives you an idea what my, my thinking process here, where if someone is in a longevity protocol or, longe or is a longevity expert, right? Um, and is if living the life of, of uh, that is conducive for longevity, they're gonna be able to benefit from this breakthrough, right? But they'll also benefit even if there is no breakthrough. But there's a big jump. There's this big jump because the the concepts of aging, the of of aging of the heart and the aging of the brain and the liver and the kidney and the bones, right? We're going to be able to reverse that over time. All right. And the a AI is going to allow this to happen. AI is going to give us the roadmap to be able to do this for, for with different types of treatments. Now, you know, maybe some of these treatments are going to be stem cell related treatments. Some of them may be actually just run of the mill, you know, certain to do this and that. And, you know, there's a compound effect, right? Like, for example, uh, people have noticed that you can slow down uh, cardiovascular disease when you couple certain types of medications with metformin. So, so, you know, there's these things that could potentially happen. Now, when time goes on and we get AI plus, I'll call AI plus plus, AI plus plus is, is, an, is building on through the, the, those breakthroughs. So this breakthrough is taking place in 20, in 2029. But in AI++, we may have another breakthrough in 2045. Right? So these longevity experts, because they were they were projected to live to, let's say this person is 50 years old at this moment in time. Non-AI, they're projected to live beyond 120. But this 50-year-old is now with the AI breakthrough is projected to live to 200. This 50 year old without a non AI breakthrough is because of just medical technology, uh, let's say is able to get to 100. There's more 100, right? But this person, non longevity type, may with an AI breakthrough live to 150. Okay. With the AI, this individual may hit the 200 mark. Well, this individual may hit the 450 mark plus. Okay. So this is this is what I mean by being able to benefit from the compound effect of technology and following this anti-aging protocol. So this 50-year-old that's on an anti-aging protocol lifestyle. Non-AI breakthrough is most likely going to live beyond 120, maybe 122, maybe 123, but around 120, a little bit above. With an AI breakthrough, there's a radical jump to the 200s. And then another AI breakthrough, really this should be like AI plus, this would be uh, 450, all right? Now, 
think about this for a sec. This person, the longevity expert is 50. These people are 50 years old today in 2024. All right. In 2029, right, they are going to be 55. All right. And in 2045, so 40, 45, uh, in 2045, so 45 minus 29 is what? 16. Okay. So you have 55 oh, um, plus 16, 16. All right, so this person in 2045 will be 72. So you're a 72-year-old that will benefit no matter which category you're in, the, the longevity category. By 20, 2045, you're 71 years old chronologically, but you're targeted for a 450-year life expectancy. While a non-longevity non, uh, person by 2045 is 71 and they're just about normally would die, but with an AI breakthrough, they would reach 200. So you see the, this is the point I'm making is, is that, and of course I might be a little bit off on the numbers, but you see the, the, the main dynamics by having the compound effect of longevity, you're being able to radically benefit from the exponential benefits from AI medical breakthroughs. And it's a huge difference. It's a huge difference. It's a 250 year difference between a person that does not and a person that does, right? Now there are some social dynamics that will happen. Now, again, this is not gonna be everybody, but this, a, a big part of this, these people um, in this first wave is gonna be about a thousand or 2000 people, all right? But you're going to have people that even if they're not longevity, they start to slowly age. So there's going to be two curves, a rapid curve and then a curve that kind of slows, slowly grows. That's the point I'm making here. Now, in let's say 2100, so we go AI plus plus, right? It's very possible that people may live to a thousand years. Or let's say, let's give it the benefit of the doubt and just say 950 years plus, NOAA level, okay? Now, when you're in, in 2100, okay? In 2100, someone that is 50 now, will be 126 in 2100. And so you can see that they are relatively young to where they're going their life expectancy may go with this with this accelerated version. The key takeaway, the key takeaway on this is the key is to stay on a longevity stay on a um an anti-aging protocol okay now there are these terms called not die by brian johnson or don't die he has this term called don't die okay this term here um is stating that if you die, you're not going to benefit from this major breakthrough that's going to be taking place soon. Now, there's going to be some people that benefit from it greatly because of socioeconomic situation, because of their lifestyle, right? And there are going to be others that will benefit at a slower trajectory for life expectancy. 
for ones that could not afford it and did not have the lifestyle. Okay. So now, of course, I could be wrong a little bit on the numbers, plus or minus the, you know, a certain amount. But the main concept here is pretty solid. The key is that if there's no AI breakthrough, which is possible, longevity people are going to be averaging above 120. People that don't, through just the average medical breakthroughs without AI, are going to inch up towards becoming centurion. Okay. Now, for ones that are going, let's say there are AI breakthroughs, there's going to be compound effects with AI breakthrough and AI plus and AI plus plus and AI plus plus plus, right? That will push this to a point where it there is probably going to be a, a plateau. Right now, some people may want to die at age 80. You know, some people may want to die at age 800. Some people may want to push it even farther. Right. But the point here is, is that there's going to be major breakthroughs in medicine through the use of AI. Now, there are singularity types. I'll do this in another video, but there are singularity types that think there's going to be a merger with AI and humans. All right, and that you're going to be less human and you're going to be just code, right? I disagree with that. I think what's going to happen is AI is going to be a tool. And that tool is going to be used to be able to add longevity and that humans are going to become more spiritual beings. But they are also going to um, live longer lives. There is this dystopic situation that could take place where the ones that are trying to use AI to control people, there is going to be the battle between what I call the monks and the transhumanists. And that battle, the monks are going to try to knock out the Achilles heel of AI, which is energy. And through that knockout, this is the inverse of the benefits of AI through medical breakthroughs. Through the knockout, there's going to be major social disruption, food supply disruption, and death and destruction. So there's going to be a massive die-off die in the blackout. And when I say massive die-off, I would say 90% of the, of the human population will die. So, you know, we're we're moving, I and mean, I'll do another video to try to explain some of my thinking on, on this, on, the, on, on this part of it, the blackout and the singularity. But assuming that this, this blackout, that, that we can manage this and have civil liberties and not have... Um, totalitarian totalitarians you know trying to control us through ai um there's going to be major breakthroughs in life life expectancy and it's not going to be incremental it's going to be quantum that's the big point here it's quantum okay it's a it's a it's a quantum thing so like in ai plus plus for a non longevity person you may be hitting the 450 mark okay so there's these, you can see this trend that's, that's, that's taking place here, you know? So you know, you're going, you're, you're adding, you're, you know, adding 50 years and then an, another 50 years and then another, and then it jumps to 250, right? But here the, the acceleration is, is higher with the longevity people. Now, of course, some of these longevity people may get hit by a car and they die early, right? But the point here is, is that there are going to be more and more outliers, right? Now, this is probably in, you know, we're talking probably the five standard deviation, right? not five standard deviation, let me, um, three, three standard deviation, right, for these people. We're not in the, the, the standard deviation, the, the 
of one. So we're like in the three standard deviations for these for these people. The standard deviation, the the average person that's not longevity type, um, that's not gonna, you know, that that's not gonna they're in the, the standard deviation, they may live to maybe the 80s. Right. And then if there's an AI breakthrough, then maybe they hit to the 120s. And then with the AI plus, then maybe they will um let me just move this. Maybe they would be um, at about 200. No, that would be um, maybe 150. And then, you know, maybe they hit to 300, something like that. Right? So this is, this is like a standard. This is like a three sigma. Three sig and three sig. So and this is a lot this is an anti-aging, anti-aging protocol. This is non anti-aging. And this is right here. Um, uh, I'm sorry. This is one sig sigma, and this is non anti aging. So you get an idea on how people are going to be d d different with the way they the way they may benefit from AI. But the key is is that if you can live long enough to the breakthrough, right, and you take care of your body and you follow what the AI is saying in terms of how to maximize your life expectancy, what's going to happen is, is that you're going to be able to live longer. And the people that don't follow, that don't want to follow it, right, then they're going to, their life expectancies are going to, you know, stay at the 80 to the 120 mark. They'll probably plateau at about 100 or 120. But that's kind of like my my mind, and of course, there's maybe a, some some plus minus on the data here, you know. But this is my thought process, you know. This idea that people there's going to be a compound effect, and that if you've already prepared your body for it, or you're a newborn, you are going to benefit from the AI breakthrough more than ones that haven't prepared for this transition. And, um, and you know, you're not there, your people are may not benefit as much. Now, here's the kind of the moral dilemma here, or the, there's kind of an ethical kind of question here. Ones that follow the protocol and, and, and uh, have gotten their body to a point where they can benefit from the AI breakthrough and, and punch through the 200 plus barrier, that will be, um, pe people may start having this idea, well, they can live forever and therefore they're, they may become less ethical. Or they may say, you know what? I can reverse this self-destructive damage. This I can reverse self-destruct destruction. So they decide to be more self-destructive, and maybe they wouldn't live to two hundred plus years, but they live to one hundred and fifty. So some people in the longevity world may say, "Well, I'm living such a long life, I can be self-destructive for a decade." These people here who are not following the longevity protocol may have something similar where they say, you know what, I'm going to benefit from an AI breakthrough and live to 150 and I'll be self-destructive and I'll live, I, you know, and through that self-destruction, I'll be able to live to hundred uh, instead of living to 150. So some people may increase their self-destruction because they know that they'll be able to live longer. In addition, 
people may actually have kids because through this breakthrough, most likely fertility um, could be later in life. Like remember Abraham, he had children, he started having children when he was already a hundred years old, over a hundred years old. And same thing with Sarah. So, so we may actually start seeing that people are having children at a, at a later age. Now, so there's going to be some social changes that may take place. But um, age is, the aging process is going to radically change for many individuals. And I think that there's there, there are a thousand to two thousand people living today that will benefit from this AI breakthrough and punch through the 200 year mark. And there will be people that are not following an anti-aging protocol that will be able to, to benefit from an AI breakthrough and, and get to about 150. The people that are going to live to 150, there may this 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 num the 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 number of people doing this may actually be more because there's more people that are non longevity protocol enthusiasts versus ones that are following the longevity protocol. So um, it, you know there's. But not everyone's going to benefit. Remember, this is a three sigma thing, right? So not everyone's going to benefit. But then there are going to be more people that that are the one sigma, the average. A medical, an AI breakthrough may get them to Moses' age of 120. So, but there are people that are going to be punching through the 200 plus and by punching through the 200 plus, then you're going to be benefit. You're going to get the added compound benefits of AI plus and AI plus plus and AI plus 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 and on and on and on. Right. Because you can just see here, someone that's 50 years old now, by the time 2100 comes around, they're only 126. Well, you know, they're that that's going to put them in the range where they're going to be able to benefit the nine, 950 plus long years of longevity. So this, this concept, you know, is, is what I wanted to get on the video. So you get an idea of what I've been thinking about here and I'll do another video about this and uh, some other thoughts about the singularity, the blackout, and the 6,000-year cycle ending. But it's there's this key. This, there's this key takeaway. The key to stay on an anti-aging protocol, right? And the idea of not to die, because by dying, you're going to miss the AI breakthrough and the benefits of the, of the AI plus and the AI plus plus. People need to get to 2029. And people need to get to 2045. That's the key. That's the key. Because there's going to be huge AI medical breakthroughs. Now, there is a negative feedback loop on this. And that is the blackout. And this is the battle between the monks and the transhumanists. So, and I'll, I'll do that in another video. Please help support my work by subscribing to all my channels. I have four channels on YouTube. I have Bright Tan, Bit Shoot, and Rumble. Click the links in the description of this video and all my videos. You can also help support my work by donating through Stripe, PayPal, or Buy Me a Coffee on my website, the-studio-reykjavik.com. Click the link in the description of this video to get to my website and, uh, and donate if you would like. Please be a paid member on my Patreon channel so you can get the latest ideas that I have, um, and you're supporting me being able to do videos like this. And I am grateful for the ones that have supported for four years. In addition, follow the protocol. 
I have lots of supplements. I have a protocol that if you follow, you're going to slow down the aging process. All right. I have new products that are coming online uh, next month that are going to, that's going to um, augment the protocol. I don't want to bring them up right now, but it's something that I've been experimenting with and um, they will be available next month. So please go to the store, the dash studio dash Reykjavik.com and follow my advice. Take this, the max 35, take a teaspoon of it a day to neutralize pathogens, take a teaspoon of, of C60. That's a very strong antioxidant. It's going to help to boost up the health of your mitochondria and help to increase your energy levels and bring down those reactive oxygen species. Take turmeric and ashwagandha. It brings down inflammation and controls your blood glucose levels. Take vitamin D3. That helps to get rid of cells that have been infected. It helps with apoptosis. It's also a gene expression cofactor. Omega-3, really important for controlling your lipid profile. It helps with cardiovascular disease. But also, omega-3 is known to prevent red blood cells from sticking. My digestive enzyme complex, really important because it's it breaks down carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins to help with energy absorption. It helps to reduce the load on your pancreas. And it is proteolytic and fibrinolytic. What that means is that it would break apart glycoproteins and break apart fibrin in clots. So really important to take the digestive enzyme complex. And um, lignans, very important. It's a powder you should be taking every day to help boost up your immune system. So if you follow my advice here, with proper supplementation, proper diet, which I'll go into more detail in another video, proper exercise, which I will go in more detail in another video, proper balancing and proper uh, mental training and mindfulness, all these synergistically will slow down the aging process. And you are going to be being, you, you are preparing yourself for the breakthroughs that are happening between 2029 and 20. 45. All right. The people that follow are going to benefit. The people that don't follow are not going to benefit. Not everyone is going to reach the 200 plus. There are going to be about a thousand to 2000 people that are living on this planet right now that are going to go beyond the 200 plus mark. Not everybody, but many people are going to be benefiting from the things that are going to be taking place with the discoveries in longevity in proper nutrition, proper diet, exercise, all right? Now, it's up to you. If you choose not to do it, that's your choice, but it, that's a choice. And everyone should, you know, have their have a choice, right? I, I believe in choice. But the people that decide not to die are the ones that are benefiting from this these huge AI medical breakthroughs and eclipse what we just went through in 2020. So I, you know, I have looked into some of these things and uh, you need to pay attention because uh, if you don't, you're not going to benefit from it. Thank you for listening. Please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and get those products and follow my protocol. And you're going to see improvements in your health, improvements in your immune system, and you are preparing yourself to benefit from the AI medical breakthrough that's going to be taking place soon. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.